Hello hoppers and everyone else on the internet that may have found this video. Um, just to tell you right at the beginning, I am making a short version and a long version of this video. The short version will play first, the long version will play second. So let's go right into the f short version. Um, what I use to play my to record my videos at a high quality and everything is MSI Afterburner. Uh, the way you find that is go to Google, type in MSI Afterburner, and you'll end up with this page. So I just went here, typed it in, it's the very top link, click it, got this, download it. I'm going to download. Um, I don't need it right now because I'm actually using it to record this at this very moment. So I'm just going to close this um, and let's go into it. So I've already got it running. Should be right back here. Awesome. There it is. This is what it looks like. It looks very complicated, right? Um, it's not. This is a program that was made to uh, tweak graphic settings and everything. Um, and then a few years ago, they added video capture abilities. The way you find it is just like I did right now. You click on settings right there. Scroll over a bit until you find video capture. Click it and you'll find this page. The first thing you want to do to make it work at all is set your hotkey. So you need to click in this area right there, then just push whatever you want on the keyboard. I do control home because nothing ever uses that combination, uh, but you can make it just a simple F1 if you want. Um, just keep in mind that it might overlap with some other hotkey within the program you're using, so you'll end up in this fight. Um, I use MJ MJPEG compression rather than uncompressed. Uncompressed is huge. All of these are huge, actually. Uh, that's just super ultra extra huge. Um, MJPEG is motion JPEG. JPEG is a normal image. MJPEG is in motion. It's a bunch of them together. So uh, we got that. I set it to 85% quality. I keep it at full frame and I actually do it at 60 frames per second. Even though YouTube only supports 30 frames per second, uh, I have double that just in case I ever want to have slow motion footage. I have extra stuff that I've recorded and I can slow it down. Um, my computer's definitely above average though as far as uh, how powerful it is so if your computer uh, can't handle that I would definitely recommend dropping all of these things down uh, making them much lower uh, it's just got to work with what you got right um, I have a degree in computer animation so my stuff happens to be a bit better than most um, I don't ever actually see really any drop in quality in the videos or in uh, uh, the games that I'm playing as I'm playing them and recording them um, it's never that big of a deal. Uh, it actually smoothed out a few games, like Battlefield 3 runs better for me now. Anyway, um, so we've got this. Uh, before we get it going and everything, you want to go in here, uncheck this option right here. Um, if you don't uncheck that, it will be constantly showing a little ticker up in the top of your screen uh, in your recording, which is very annoying, uh, I find. Um, so get rid of that and you won't have anything overlapping on your screen, like I don't right now. And you will not be seeing anything either. Excellent. Um, also, you can set up other things, but uh, let's just leave it there for now. I would not trust the audio recording in this. Um, it is very screwy. So what I use instead is I use a separate program. Oops, I've peeked a little bit there. Uh, I use a separate program uh, to record my voice. Now I use a very fancy one. I use Adobe Sound Booth CS5, um, and I quite like it. I'm recording into a Blue Yeti microphone. However, those are both very expensive things. So what I did in my original videos before I decided before I got this set up correctly was all I used was the built-in Windows sound re sound recorder and my webcam's built-in microphone, and it worked fine. It sounded just fine, especially once it was compressed for internet and everything. Uh, you should have a sound recorder. Uh, I don't know what the Mac version is, but I'm sure it has one as well that comes standard with the computer. All you do is click that. It starts recording. Um, this is probably gonna mess up my. <laughs> my recording right now, uh, when you push stop, it asks you to save it. And it saves it as a Windows media file, so it already starts out compressed. It's a very manageable size, won't really cause any problems for you. Um, if you click cancel, don't worry, you haven't lost it. Um, all it does is go back to wherever you left off, and when you click resume, it'll just start adding to the end of your file. Um, when you click to close it, though, it will ask you if you want to save it. I'm gonna say no. You can say yes. Um, anyway, uh, you can do that separately. It just you'll just have to edit your footage um, afterwards and line them back up. So I've got uh, um, the audio we're just recording straight off the computer on here, um, and then your voice is being recorded to a completely separate file. So you'll have to use your editing program, like this is mine right here. Don't know why it's showing that. Oh, that's right. It's it's the video I've already made. It's the video that you're about to watch um, <laughs> that I've edited together. Oh my gosh, I've got like inception going on here. I've got Premiere Pro within Premiere Pro within Premiere Pro. Oh my. Anyway, uh, yes. So this is a video that you're about to watch uh, coming up in just a second. Um, otherwise, uh, if you don't need any more information than that, just use an editing program because you do end up with very large files. That's one more thing I'll tell you and then I'll jump forward to the past, not the future. Um, so let's see, this one I created right here, it's about 20 minutes long uh, and it came out, oop, that's not right. <laughs> 
this one. It's about 20 minutes long. Um, this is actually pretty small for something 20 minutes. Normally, I've got it goes at about one gigabyte a minute for me. Um, and my computer has about 10 terabytes worth of space, so that's not usually a problem for me, although I have run out of space many times. So keep that in mind that this does make very big files that are impossible to upload until you've edited them. Now, take it away, me in the past. I'm not actually going to be able to respond to myself, am I? Oh, well. Hello, hoppers, and hello to anyone else on the internet who may have ended up on this video. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you, rather than a video gameplay game, uh, just because that kind of got messed up on my computer today, um, I, rather than showing that, I'm going to show you how I record my video game footage uh, and any other type of footage. Um, first of all, uh, this is my super amazing awesome desktop. Yes! Wah. No, I just think it's kind of funny. All these videos that people upload like this, they have, you know, these super sexy ultra skins and everything and everything's all nice and fancy and um i, th I, th I thought i'd go the opposite way with that i even made it so it's kind of stupid because you can't see it but or hear it but um <laughs> i even made it so that when you log on it plays the windows 95 uh log on sound because yeah um that's fun anyway let's skip ahead um <laughs> let's fix this first and boink and now that we've rejoined the modern era, um, as you can see, I'm using Windows 7. Don't ask me if this works on Windows 8 because I don't have it and I don't know. Uh, but what I'm doing right now should work fine on, on your Windows 7 computer, probably Vista, hopefully as well, maybe. I don't know. Um, anyway, yes, we got a cute, nice Dougie in the background. Uh, that was, in fact, the first tablet drawing I ever made. Anyway, what you for first need to do is download the program, obviously, to play your video. So. The program I use is called MSI Afterburner. You, it is entirely free. All you need, oh, it just didn't repair. Uh, all you need to do is type in MSI Afterburner into your, a search bar. Um, it will be the first option that comes up. I'll just click on it, go to download it, install it. It's pretty simple. Once you have it installed, you'll have a window that looks like this when you have it open. Uh, it's kind of confusing looking, but it's because uh, MSI Afterburner is actually meant f as an overclocking uh, tool. It's meant uh, for tweaking graphics cards and everything like that. Um, it's not quite, it, it was not originally designed to record video, but it can do it now and it does it quite excellently. I've actually, every single one of my videos was recorded in this program uh, and it works very well. Um, let's see, so the way you activate its ability to record videos is you go into its settings and the first tab to the right that you just can't barely see is the video capture tab. So you can actually scroll through them side to side with these buttons here. Um, this is where you're going to set everything up. Now, you may notice on mine, I kind of, I have my settings set kind of high. I use um, MJPEG compression. I uh, don't use uncompressed. It is just enormously large. And actually, in fact, even with this uh, motion JPEG compression, if I can pull up my things here. Um, oops, a bit too big. Uh, I'm going to scroll this down. Uh, you can see this is the one I'm recording right now, this video. Um, so it, it's being interpreted as zero bytes right now. These are some test ones from earlier. Um, this, don't look at this, don't look at this! Spoilers for future videos! Uh, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, if you look at these, um, n none of these are particularly long. Let's see, it's just click on one at random. All right, so this one is 3 minutes 47 seconds long, but you can see it's 3.65 gigabytes. Um, I tend, most of the games I record tend to run um, at a gigabyte a minute, so keep that in mind. It will fill up your drive space very quickly. My computer has, um, oof, not very much space right now. I need to delete some of these videos. My computer has, uh, when I have everything put in it, uh, around 10 terabytes of memory, and I run out, or of, of storage, and I run out pretty frequently, actually. Um, anyway, Let's back back out of here. Um, so the first thing you need to do is set up your hotkey right here. So when you click in this little area, uh, it'll start blinking. It may it may not start blinking. It may just show nothing at all. Uh, but what you do is you just click the button that you want to be your hotkey. So um, if it says none in video capture, that means you haven't assigned anything yet. All you need to do is click in there and then click F9 or Control delete or for something, whatever you want it to be. I don't know if delete works actually. Uh, I'm not doing it right now because I'm actually using Afterburner to record right now and I don't want it to just suddenly decide that I've stopped the recording in the center because um, that would mess up my editing. Also, let's see, I've got my quality at 85%. I haven't really noticed a need to go higher than that. Um, frame rate does not need to be at 60. I, most people do at 30 and it's just fine. I haven't seen a big drop in uh, you know frame rate or anything. Uh, 
as far as what's displayed on my screen when I record at that, at that speed, and that just gives me the ability to slow down footage uh, in editing if I want to, um, to you know show some sort of slow motion capture thing. Um, let's see, further going down, I find the audio thing to be very, very unreliable. I never ever use it. I record my voice entirely separately. In fact, I can bring up the program right now. Um, well, so this is part of the window. Uh, this is my, you, know, you can see the audio going right now. My voice is being recorded in Adobe Soundbooth CS5 right now um, by a blue, by a blue Yeti microphone um, because uh, I, I can't rely on a, you know, lower quality program. Although in some of my early, earlier videos, it was just my webcam microphone recording straight into the Windows sound recorder. So it is doable and it does work as long as you have some sort of microphone. I just definitely recommend recording your voice separately. That does mean that you'll have to use a video editing software of some type to, to sync your um, voice back up with the video in like a separate audio track. Um, and if that sounds confusing to you, then maybe this isn't the best option for you or you'll have to maybe figure something else out. Um, sometimes it does record two sources correctly. Uh, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it will record them both, but nothing will be able to play them back. I do know that my editing software just uh, ha doesn't have a clue what to do when it when it uh, formats it in the way that it uses, so I just have completely avoided that, and it's easier to edit later on anyway when I have them separate. Um, oh, man, I was hoping for this video to be short. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I, it's because I've used this for a while and I'm aware of all of the small faults it may have and everything. Um, Yes, yes, go away. Okay. Um, also, you will know that this program is running. I'm going to minimize it. It vanishes. You'll know it's running by the presence of this little jet thingy right here. Um, but on top of having that, you will also may need to make sure that this is running right here because this is actually um, the the display on on screen display server and the thing that actually tracks what's open. So um, I wasn't able to record the uh, the video of my desktop uh, just now until I added my uh, audio recording program to the list and told it to not do anything with it because for some reason there's some 3D uh, rendering going on in my sound program and I don't know where it came from uh, but I had to tell it don't do anything with that and that and only when nothing it with 3D is running will it allow you to record the desktop it's really particular about that and certain games that you want to record most will de detect by default but certain ones like you can see I have Boltanicula right here um, which is another video I have coming up um, but the Nicula does not record at first. You need to add it just by going here to find where the file is. So what I did here was I found my Adobe Soundbooth one to, to get rid of it. Um, and uh, you have to find the file, then it, you'll have your options for whatever you want to change about it in here. Now, you may notice I have my um, display for my frame rate and all of the, that information. I have it set to as small as possible. Um, this preview right here, is not to scale with the um, with the screen. That preview is actually full size, so it's just showing. I, I'm not actually sure why it shows it that way. Uh, you click here to say what corner you want it in, so it actually shows up right here on my screen, and I get this tiny, tiny thing that blends in with most most games. The default color is just this hideous fuchsia color um, that's just awful. So I have a very, very small one. Um, I and I have it set to um, not record that. Uh, because it just gets in the way. If you've ever seen someone recording their uh, on-screen video and it has that little ticker going past, I, I just find it very distracting and annoying uh, to be able to see what, you know, that just extra stuff on there. So the way you disable that would be to go in here and it should be an option. All right, sorry, it took me a second to find what I was looking for there. Um, if you go, so we've got these two separate windows. This one is the one that has the little um, number on it, and this one is the main one that just is the standard window. So if I minimize this, you'll see it vanish from here, but now it'll show back up in my system tray. This one's still out here. So anyway, we need to go into settings, and on on-screen display, you want to turn this off, and that's what's going to get rid of your little um, counter or whatever else you have going on up there in the corner of the screen. I think I had a few videos way back, like when I first started this, well not way back, I mean I've only had this channel for a few months, but uh, I think I had a few videos at the very beginning where I hadn't figured that out yet, uh, that, that have that going on, and it just 
bugged me like crazy, especially without, before I even changed the color scheme. Um, right, and then so, uh, as I mentioned before, you definitely do want to edit this this uh, footage, if only because it needs to be compressed. Uh, straight out of this program, especially if you, if you have settings like mine, which is 60 frames a second, full frame, you can use this to you know make it smaller or something like that if you need to. Um, at the quality I have it at, you know, at a gigabyte a minute, uh, the videos I upload are generally 30 to 50 minutes long. That's just undoable, especially with my, you know, average internet connection. Um, so what I have to do is go in, well, and really, you don't want to upload just straight raw footage anyway. Um, I think it's boring. So, yes, I use a program like this. This is a uh, actually my most recent video. I haven't deleted the source files for it yet, so it's a good example right here. Um, I have edited, you know, this was probably an hour and a half worth of footage. Yeah, it actually was. It was exactly an hour and a half worth of footage that I edited down into about 41-ish uh, minutes, looks like. Um, and edited this all together, had it exactly like I want. Um, there was a little bit of, a, of an intro here. <laughs> Sound the alarm. Boobs. Hello, hoppers! And <laughs> that first part there was actually made in a separate program. That would be After Effects right here. Um, I do use a lot of different programs. Um, yeah, my secret is that I have a degree in computer animation. Uh, uh, but yeah, you can. This is, I guess, a nice little look into. Uh, how much editing work I put into these stupid videos that I make uh, that barely anyone watches. Anyway, the settings that you would want to use for YouTube when you export this out. I always export out two versions of my video. I export out a high quality um, compressed version uh, and generally I make that uh, 32 megabits per second with uh, H.264 compression and uh, uh, an MP4 container on it. Um, it's going to be 30, and I run it at 32 megabits per second with a maximum of 40, uh, just in case there's a huge spike. That generally makes it look like it is straight out of the game. The compression is very minimal, unless there's a ton, ton, ton of action in in a shot. Uh, you, I, I can barely notice it, to be honest. Um, it appears I saved this one out as 50 frames per second accidentally. Um, that's fine. I guess I'm just preserving higher detail there. Uh, and also, so I, I saved that out. The um, one that actually matters for YouTube, though, is going to be 5 right here for your uh, overall megabit per second uh, rate. And then this one doesn't really matter. I just kind of 10 or 8 or whatever. Um, but YouTube videos are capped at 30 frames per second and 5 megabits per second. So anything above that is extra. However, unless you have a very long video like this one, where, um, you know, the, even at this super compressed uh, ratio, I'm going to end, I ended up with a one and a half gigabyte file that took me about three hours to upload. Um, it, if you have a much shorter video that you want to upload, I definitely would, would uh, recommend that you keep it at a much higher quality, you know, eight or 10 or e even higher than that. Um, the reason being that, uh, Every time YouTube processes a video, that means it is actually completely recompressing it again. So it's going to compress it down, um, you know, twofold basically by the time it's uh, actually threefold if you count the original recording uh, by the time it's played on YouTube. So, um, but or by the time it's uh, uh, finished uploading and processing to YouTube, if if you um, do it this way. So if you put it at if, if you upload a file at the same um, bit rate that YouTube will eventually play it at, um, at maximum, you, what you're doing is just basically making it look worse. So if at all possible, upload a higher quality version of it because YouTube's going to compress it anyway. Um, but if it has more to work with when it compresses it, your file will end up looking better in the end, even though it will still be very, very heavily compressed. And uh, I'll put a link in here uh, somewhere to show you what one of my videos looked like uh, just after cutting off the end of it on YouTube because I ended up with a bit of black space at the end. Uh, it recompressed it and the video looked like complete garbage. I'll put a link to both versions of it. The one that was cut and the one that wasn't cut. Um, and I ended up just not bothering to, you know, let the cut one be public because it, it was just terrible. Uh, it was worthless and I didn't want to re-upload it either. So um, anyway, I hope I haven't missed too much. Um, as you can see here, I'm not using that fancy of a graphics card. So uh, I have a, 
I have dual uh, GeForce GTX 560 Ti's. Actually, let me just pull up my thing here. So, whoop, went up on the other screen. All right. Uh, oh, that's not what I meant to click. <laughs> I'm a bit tired. You can probably hear it in my voice. Also, anyone who subscribed to me, look out for a video from me tomorrow where I will be showing you a game that is actually coming out tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> I'll be giving doing a giveaway, hopefully with... I don't know. It'll probably I'll probably end up with two or three copies to give away to you guys. Um, if anyone missed it, if anyone missed out on my twist, uh, Gianna's sister's twisted dreams giveaway, uh, you'll have sort of a second chance here. Um, Gianna's sister's twisted dreams: Rise of the Owl, 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 Owl Lord. <laughs> It comes out tomorrow, and I already have it in my Steam queue, and um, with any luck, I'll have a video made and uploaded within that day uh, to have a game on launch day of, the of you know, of an actual, or sorry, have a video on launch day of an actual new game and everything, which will be cool, and it'll be a nice follow-up to my giveaway of uh, its prequel um, from a few weeks ago. So, yeah, look forward to that. Anyway, uh, let's see, let's go to properties. Uh, so anyway, you can see that um, my processor, my, my RAM, they're actually pretty good, and that's probably why I don't actually feel any um, lag spikes or anything in-game in when I use the recorder. Uh, actually, in Battlefield 3, my frame rate evened out and smoothed out. There was less screen tearing uh, overall than, than before, so uh, it's not a huge... Um, burden on my computer generally. Uh, some games definitely have a huge dip. Um, and if I'm recording something specifically for YouTube, since YouTube's capped at 30 frames per second, um, if a game, this is rare, but if a game is brought to its knees with, uh, or my computer's brought to its knees by Afterburner running in a game, um, I, as long as it stays above 30, I tend to, you know, consider that fine. Um, it'll make my gameplay a lot worse, but, uh, if you have it at higher settings and it looks pretty for the video, then, you know, that might be a good trade-off anyway. Um, so, yeah, I've talked way, 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 way longer than I meant to already. Um, I have a tendency of running my mouth off. Um, especially, I don't even know. I, I don't even feel good right now. I'm, I'm up, Oh, whoa. This is personal things. Wrong, wrong button, wrong button. My mouse is... My mind is my... Bleh. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I hope you <laughs> found this helpful, guys. Um, oh, one other thing. I don't, I, just because I know people are going to say it regardless, um, and I, I made this video because a lot of people have asked me, um, and I know that in response to this video, a lot of people are probably going to comment things like Camtasia is better, uh, DX Story is better, Fraps is better, whatever, um, and to that I say, sure, that's great, um, <laughs> that's your opinion too, uh, this is my opinion, I really like MSI Afterburner, um, Fraps, I've only, oh, I've never really used Fraps because, you know, I had to pay for it, and when I started this channel, uh, I really wasn't interested in, you know, investing anything in it at all. Now, every single video, I give away multiple video games for free out of my own pocket, so there's that, but <laughs> anyway, um, Fraps I've never used, uh, so I can't really speak to that one. However, I know that Camtasia is awful and it runs at a terrible frame rate and uses very, very lossy compression. Um, and DX Story was okay, with a huge, huge exception, um, in that it completely killed Adobe Premiere Pro's ability on my computer to process sound. I had to completely remove DX Story before uh, I could edit anything with sound at all. Uh, and I f only found that out uh, by seeing someone else's YouTube comment that DX Story completely r destroyed their computer's Sony Vegas ability to process sound, and it only came back after they deleted DX Story. So I know it's not just me that's had this problem. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's just my warning to you, and if anyone else has have, had that issue with a similar program, um, I would most certainly recommend... Uh, getting rid of it, to, uh, getting rid of uh, your recording software, specifically DX Story, if you've had an issue. Uh, anyway, anyway, as I'm getting my settings back to the way I have had them previous to this video, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, <laughs> uh, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Because it's cool. I don't really know what I'm going to put at the end of this video. <laughs> uh, link to previous video? and subscribe message and thank you message
And... Yeah, that works. <laughs> oh, logo. Over there. <laughs> I'll see you next time, Hoppers. <laughs> This base isn't <laughs> being run by the Allies. It's wow, being run that by actually. the Future Tech Corporation. <laughs> what could Future Tech want here? <laughs>